Hello everybody, this is Orange and welcome to my abyss and welcome to my July 2022 manga haul. This month we got a good selection of manga. As always, I try to pick up the good stuff that I enjoy. Um, we got a selection of about 13-ish manga. It's a, it's a bit uh, complicated when I go into it. And then we have a few comics as well that I picked up. And so let's dive into what I've picked up over the month. Let's get started with number one being volume six of Hina Matsuri. Another good series. I'm really enjoying it so far. It's, or I, I know I will enjoy it. I've watched through the anime several times and I love the manga. And I'm having a good time. It's just a good old comedy, good old fun comedy about psychic girls and Yakuza. It's a good time. It's a very good time. And I cannot wait to pick up more because I think the, um, the English printing of the series is going to be, um, ending with what the manga has soon because I believe it's going to be, um, I believe it's an 18 volume series and I think they're about to like release volume 17 and I can't wait to catch up because Hinamatsuri is a good time. It's a great time if you want some good vibes, some funny vibes, and even some family vibes. If you like the, if you like the found family dynamic, it's, it's for you. And then beneath that we have, um, an entire series actually, um, Phantom Feet, Phantom Thief Jean volumes, um, god I can't count, two, one, what's wrong? Two, three, four, and five. Now this is a um, Magical Girl series from I think the late 90s, early 2000s. And I remember um, like years ago, before I even started doing this, I actually had volume one of this in my collection. And I don't know, I didn't really vibe with it back then, so I sold it off. But I decided, like, I went through, like, a weird, like, Magical Girl kick. Like, I, I do every few months. Magical Girl is, like, my favorite genre ever. And it's like, I remember this series, and I'm like, oh, it's a short series. I might as well pick it up for some funsies. And I did. And it's just a, it's just, like, a pretty decent, like, <laughs> older shoujo. There's, like, there's, there's the beautiful artwork, like, always present in, like, a lot of the shoujo that I adore. I adore, like, the art style of, like, um, late 90s, early 2000s shoujo. The big old sparkly eyes, the tiny, tiny noses and mouth. It's a great time. The artwork is beautiful. If you just can't tell from the covers how, like, wonderful the coloring is. It has, um, <laughs> some, like, yikesy moments in it, but hey, you just gotta have that, that yikes in every shoujo, right? Am I right, guys? But it's a good time. This is actually a library copy. <laughs> I, I couldn't get the sticker off, so that's gonna be here now. It's like, oh, I used to own you, and now I only have a library copy of you. But yeah, it's a good time. I actually watched the anime as well, and um, this is a Magical Girl series, and I think it's a very, like, thematically weird Magical Girl series. So we got the the Phantom Thief shtick, like, a la, like, uh, a la, like, Saint Tail, but also the 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 main character, her outfit is based off of Jean Arc, the, you know, the historical figure, but then, like, her love interest is Sh Sinbad, you know, <laughs> Sinbad from a totally different, like, uh, history, mythology, place of the world. And then, like, her mascot is named Finn Fish, which I think is an Irish thing. And then, and then the love interest, like, mascot is called Axis Time. This is, like, the weirdest meshing together of, like, magical girl concepts, and I adore it. It's just a, it's just a good old time if you like your early 2000s, like, your late, late 90s, early 2000s magical girl shoujo. I love it. I love it. And beneath that, we have To Your Attorney to Your Eternity, Volume 17. What can I say? It's more To Your Eternity. It's a very interesting series. I've been collecting it for, I think, since, like, the first volume, like, release. And the anime is also, like, really good, too. I suggest, like, checking out the first season of the anime if you're not too sure. But this is done by the same author of, um, the same mangaka of A Silent Voice, which I actually haven't read A Silent Voice or watched it. Some bullying stuff gets to me a lot, so I haven't really gotten to that one. But this one, I, I really like. We're currently, um, Anyone who is reading To Your Eternity and, like, is current, uh, this is current as I am. I think there's a few more chapters, like, in Japan, but it's, like, they're on a weird arc right now. <laughs> I think it could, I don't know where it's going, but, um, it's a weird arc. I definitely like the, um, arc before this one a lot more, <laughs> but it's, like, with this book, I think it, like, really, like, cemented, like, really interesting ideas with, like, the current arc that's going on, and I'm honestly wondering how long is this series gonna go for, like, after this? Because it's, it's an interesting time, but I'm... And for the ride, I love the characters. The best characters in um, To Your Eternity are uh, Gugu and Bon. Just saying. So if you also like Gugu and Bon as much as I do, please talk to me. <laughs> I gotta tell you how much I love Gugu. And then below that, we have Beyond the Clouds, uh, The Girl Who Fell from the Sky, volumes 3 and 4. And with that, I'm caught up with the series, and I think there will be a new volume releasing uh, next early next year. And this is a really fun, really cute series. This, um, look at the, 
the beautiful like watercolor recovers. It's wonderful. But this is actually a really interesting series because it's um I believe a it's I believe it's published in a French magazine. <laughs> sure, yeah, whatever. I like it a lot though. It's a good time. Yep, it's really cute, really fun. If you like a your steampunk with a more cutesy edge, I suggest this. It's a good time. And then below that we have my beloved Witch Hat Atelier Volume Seven. It's more Witch Hat. It's fantastic. I am really invested in Witch Hat now. I can't believe it took me so many years to like actually get into it. But Witch Hat is a beautiful series. I love the magic system. I love the characters. The artwork is beyond stunning. And like the story is really good too. And it's just so good. It's such a good time. I love Witch Hat. It's so good. I'm gonna shill for the series only now. Oops. <laughs> Oops, it's happening. And below that we have Devil's Candy Volume 2. Um, this is actually, I'm um, technically speaking, not a manga. It's an OELM, which is an English language manga. So like it, it, it was made here in the good old US of A. <laughs> But I, don't, but I really like it so far. Um, it's actually a webcomic, so you can read it online. And I believe the webcomic is still currently publishing, which is why um, I, 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 feel like I was like scouring websites for a while, like, when's Volume 3 coming out? I don't think they have enough chapters to make it Volume 3 yet, so we're gonna have to wait for that. But I, I love it. I love the art. I think the character designs are like really, really cute. I, <laughs> it's a good time. For me, when I was a, when I was a young bab, I watched um, Scooby-Doo in the Ghoul School. And it currently changed my brain chemistry forever. And like my favorite, one of my favorite subject hunters of the story is school, but monsters? Yep. And that's what this guy is. And I love it so much. And it's a good time. And the art is good. I'm going to have to like reread it again because we only got two volumes out. And I want to soak in all the detail. The art of work, again, beautiful. Great job on the art. I'm not showing it. You got you to gotta get it yourself. <laughs> and then below that we have uh, the Liminal Zone. Let's go, BB. More Junji Ito for Mito. It's a Junji Ito one. These are actually um, more recent stories that he um he sent in the afterword that he wrote during the um quarantine during the quarantine, and I like a lot of these stories. It's another Junji Ito anthology, as you expect from anything Junji Ito. The artwork is stunningly horrific, <laughs> and the concepts are weird. We love a king. We love you, king. And also, just God, the cover is so beautiful. It has um you can see like um holo not holographic like metallic um. I can't think today. Italic highlights on it that make it so, like really pretty, and the cover is so pretty too. The cover actually reminds me a lot of the Twisted Visions cover because because it was like sort of like the um split thing. And this is a dust jacket, and the cover inside the dust jacket is also like really pretty. It's a good time. I'm loving the cover so much, but also the insides are just as juicy. It's more Junji Ito. If you are a fan of Junji Ito, I'm just assuming you've already picked it up, and if you're and if you haven't read anything Junji Ito yet, maybe start with Uzumaki. <laughs> maybe start with that. But he's a, he's a good horror artist. I love him. And speaking of horror artists, we got volume two of Orochi by Kazuo Umez. Yes. Yes. I said it like pretty much every time I talk about any horror manga like in one of these videos, but I love Junji Ito. You just heard me gush about him for a very long time. I love him, but for the longest time, pretty much it was only like him getting published in America when it comes to like horror mangaka. And this is Kazuo Umez and he's a he's actually um one of the manga that inspired Junji Ito to start writing or to start making his manga and it's great and I love it and it's good and I really want more and even like now I have like a I have a manga list of stuff that I need to order. We got a lot of horror manga coming up from like both big companies and like indie companies that I'm like so excited for because there's so much horror manga in Japan that I want to get my hands on. And with this, I hope they keep on printing Umez because they just finished up a Drifting Classroom. Well, they didn't just finish that. They finished that up a while ago. And I want them to just reprint Cat Eyed Boy so I can have it in my hands because they reprint. It was printed once. Never again. <laughs> You know, it's a good time. It's it's Orochi. It's good. It's a good time. It's Ubez. Good time. <laughs> and then below that, we have Soul Eater, the Perfect Edition, or yeah. Yep, the Perfect Edition, Volume 7. It's more Soul Eater. It's more good. These volumes are so heavy. Like, they use a very, like, uh, like glossy kind of page. Like, even compared to, like, the other hardcover book, this is so much more heavier. I love it because Soul Eater is a good time. Soul Eater was one of my first anime. It's such a nostalgic series for me. And the manga, like, goes on past the anime. And just, ooh, it's so good. It's so good. I love how it goes. And on the cover, we have my beloved, my beloved Krona. They are great. I I adore them. They're they're just our awkward little child, and they do their best. <laughs> but it's a good time, and I cannot wait for more of the perfect edition. I love Soul Eater. 
And then below that, we're getting into our actually our comic section. So if you want to dip out, you can, but I suggest reading comics as well if you read manga because you might enjoy them just as much. And we have, oh my god, I'm so excited. We have Blackwater. So Blackwater was actually originally a um, Tumblr webcomic, which I've been reading for a while now. And when they finished that up, the, um, the people behind it decided to actually um, go ahead and print it in its own physical copy, and I'm so excited about that. Blackwater is a fantastic series. It's it's so it's just this one issue, and I am so excited that it's in my hands. It is it is LGBTQ plus. It has it has them gay characters in it. It's so good. It has a great setting. It has a good story. Good coming of age angst. Good romance. <laughs> Look at my boyfriends. They're dating. <laughs> they're dating, and they're in Maine. <laughs> Welcome to New England. Yeah, but it's a great time, and I'm so happy that it, like. It got published because I love this. I love the webcomic for a long time. The artwork in it is so good. How they draw mouths is transcendent. <laughs> I love how they draw teeth. <laughs> you know, it's me when I'm like, ooh, yummy, look at those teeth. <laughs> and I'm so excited for the next project that the crew is going to be working on, which is, um, I think, Lay Down in Lavender. They've been posting a lot of uh, concept art for that series, and it's looking beautiful, may I say. <laughs> But this one is also beautiful. Look at that bag too. Look at her! But this one's great. I suggest it. Please pick it up if you can. And then below that we got another kind. I was like comic shopping and like this was like three dollars and I like skimmed through it and the artwork looked good so I decided to pick it up. And it is... I'm, I'm really surprised by how much I adore it. This is pretty much like most things that Aaron likes within a comic book. It has... Um, Monster teens. Oh boy, those teens are supernatural. Cryptids. You get like a whole Mothman. It's LGBTQ+. We love that. One of the characters, he they. He they for life, baby. <laughs> I love to see it. It is good time. It is good time. It is monster kid adventure of discovering yourself and finding out who they are. And it's a good time. I really enjoyed it. It's a, it's a good time. And I'm so surprised I just like saw it at random. There are so many just like American made comics that I still need to like pinch into because there, there's so many that are being made. And I always like, I always check the comic section. I'm like, God, there's so many good ones of you. I need to grab more. <laughs> but it's a good time. I just keep on saying that. I'm tired. <laughs> but fantastic. Most things Aaron likes are in that one. And then below that we have, oops, another gay comic. Oops, it's Wind. Wind Volume 2. This one is also like really interesting. I love the fantasy setting. I love how all the characters look miserable 24-7. I love the colors. I love the monster design, just like the character design in general. I love how this character has like wings and the wings don't come out of like the shoulder blades. They come out of the lower part of the back. I think that's so cool for a wing design. Can you tell that I that I spent like most of my my elementary and middle school re years reading the Maximum Ride comic, and I I've, I'm so used to seeing characters with like angel wings, me seeing angel wings coming out of like a different part of the back. I'm like, oh my god, that's impossible. <laughs> but this is also a good time, and I'm really excited to like see what comes next in the series because this is volume two, and there's gonna be more. I'm hoping <laughs> it, it, it ends on a cliffhanger. But yep, those are all the comics I have. What comics have you been reading over the month of July? Do, do you want to pick up any of the ones I've read? What are your opinions? How are we doing today? Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.